All right, I want to do a follow-up on my previous video about my autism traits and because a strange thing happened with this video and I want to I want to um, show it to you and this has never happened with it, with any of my videos before this and it's the it's not really the nature of, of um, how many views it got or anything like that but it's the it's the um, views in relation to the um, comments and the comments themselves that are interesting to me and I wanted to follow this up because I think that there's a chance or an opportunity I should say to do something worthwhile here with this uh, subject and I, I want to uh, continue the discussion if you will or follow up on it because I didn't give um, how I say it? I, I didn't give as detailed information about my experience as I think would be helpful to people judging from the comments that I saw on this uh, and I, I'll, let's see if I can show you this in the, in the camera here uh, I'm going to select here you can see the YouTube studio here and this is the video here I don't know if you can see if you'll be able to read this or not but I'll read it it says right now today this is a, a I posted this video on Monday and today's Wednesday morning and there's 12,000 views and that's not really remarkable I've got more views than that on a video in this short a time but I, I don't know if you can see that but what I want you to see is is it's already got 634 comments in this period of time which is not that remarkable in itself either but let me select the video and we'll, we'll go we'll go down to the um and we'll view more on the comments and if I expand some of these comments these are um, let's see these are all large some of them take pages like I, I usually read the comments on my phone here and respond to them after I post a video and and some of these comments I have to scroll see they're all quite large I don't know if you could see that how the, it's kind of blown out from the exposure but some of them I have to scroll up and down to even read the whole comment on the screen of the phone here there are many many comments like this of people's personal experiences of, of their experience with this autism issue and I think it's worthwhile for me to um, expand upon this a little bit because and every comment was positive and, and I started that other video as kind of a rant about comments on my existing videos and how people were sometimes not as polite as they could be or whatever but but the thing is is that a lot of these comments were comments of people that I suspected felt the same way that I did about themselves and that they didn't maybe realize till later in their life because anybody that's maybe about 50 years or and old and older if they had this issue when they were younger unless they had a very extreme um, version of, of autism where you know like I said earlier were banging their head on the wall or or couldn't speak at all maybe um, they they didn't really pay too much attention to that you just went to school you know you you got placed in in remedial classes maybe I did I'll go into that in a little bit but and and uh, people thought you know you just got to man up and, and take it you know and do what you got to do you know because you just got to work on it because it's I don't know I don't know what they thought but but um, in reading the comments here now uh, thank everybody for their awesome comments man I can't imagine this this is like there was not one single negative comment about this I, I kind of was a little reluctant to do this the other video because I thought well you know I'm gonna get beat to death on this because people won't think that I was autistic and 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 nobody except one comment kind of questioned that and I think I kind of set him straight on that a little bit and he came over to my way of thinking but but I can th I can understand why they wouldn't think this of, of me and I want to explain that a little bit because I think it would be worthwhile because of the other comments that I read on this particular video this this blew me away these comments some of them I had to scroll you know many pages on the phone just to read them because they're that large 
and all of them are very large comments. It's not like a normal video of mine. Not only that, but the quantity of the comments as well, you know, the, the, um, the, the monitor turned off on the, 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 the quantity of comments in relation to the overall views is quite high for, for normally for my videos. So this six, over 600 comments with 12,000 views. Now I have, I have a video here that has 1.4 million views and it has 929 comments on it, but the percentage of that is way smaller for the amount of views than this percentage is like 5% of the, of the viewers commented. That's tremendous. And the, not only were the comments, a lot of comments, but they were large comments that explaining a lot of things about their personal lives and everything. And, and um, some of them had children that had autism and they, and they felt like my video helped them out. But I think that I can, um, I can go a step further with this. And, you know, if, if I'm not doing this because I care about views or anything on these videos. I, I just want to, like I say, the original idea was that it was sort of a, started as a rant against people making comments on other videos. But then after I reviewed the comments and, and, I, and my other idea for posting this was to help people have an understanding of um, these people like myself that that uh, struggle with this. And, and in this conversation, I'm gonna use all of the terms that people use so it's easier to communicate that way. I'm not gonna apologize. You know, in my previous video, I don't agree with a lot of these terms, but I'm gonna use them because it makes the conversation go smoother for me. And I don't have to, you know, say things like, oh, there's that comment again or something, you know, or that, classification. So I'm going to just use the terms as everybody else uses them. But you know that I don't really agree with some of those terms. But when I was, um, when I was younger, like in grade school, or, you know, when I was a little child, the, the, um, I'm, I'm going to say this because some people, I, I think they, they find it hard to believe, in fact, that I'm this way and they don't understand it. So this, I gotta give a little more history to this to make it clear. Um, and to maybe with parents that have children like this, although I was never recognized as being um, an autistic kid, I, I was like, uh, you know, just the, the slow kid and he couldn't learn as fast or, or uh, um, even see children in, in themselves can be pretty brutal in the way they treat you. It's not like adults, you know, adults are more diplomatic and polite and children though, it's kind of like they go to the maximum right off, you know, like you're the retard and everything. And, and this is what I went through because when I was younger, I, um, in grade school, I, I couldn't communicate. In fact, I couldn't talk, talk. In fact, that brings me to a, I, I, I hope you don't mind I skip around a little bit here, but that brings me to a subject about, I can remember being in my dad's house and he would have guests over like for an evening or whatever. And, and, um, he, and I can remember him saying this to me, not to me, excuse me, to his guests that, that, uh, if you, if they talk to me or ask me something and I don't respond, don't, don't be, uh, offended or, or, anything or be, that that's just the way I am I can remember him saying that but when I was like that see you, you have to think about this when a when a child is like this like I was in the beginning they're they're processing a lot of sensory inputs to them that are a little difficult for them to understand and so they're they're trying to uh, focus on certain things and, and, and exclude other things. And, and I heard my dad say these things to people. And, and par parents with autistic kids need to understand that even though they don't respond to what you're saying, they're hearing it. And later, or, or sometime, they might recognize it and understand it, because I can still remember that. And I'm 67 years old and I can remember him saying that. So they're hearing you but you might not, you know, you might get frustrated and say they're not understanding, they're not hearing, but they have no way 
or they're excluding that at the time because they're processing other sensory inputs and those are more important and they're blocking others. And this is the only way they can, they can't maybe respond to everything. So you gotta, you gotta, you have to understand that part of it. And so this was the way I was. I, I couldn't communicate verbally, I guess you might say to people. And, and uh, they didn't understand that in my school anyway. So they, so they put me in the remedial class. They called it in those days. I don't know what they call it now, but in, this was back in the 60s. You know, they, they, uh, they put me in a remedial class with the other few remedial kids in my elementary school. I, w I don't know, I can't remember exactly how many. I think there was probably maybe six of us in this class uh, out, of, out of a school that probably had a thousand students in it maybe. I don't know. I don't know how many students were in my elementary school, but there was quite a few. And so we were the um, kids that all the other kids made fun of, really. Basically, we, I had to walk to school. This is another story that, that sort of relates. I had to walk to school because the school was, um, I don't know, a quarter of a mile from our house. You know, it was down the street, not too far. So I walked back and forth to school every day. We lived in, back then in, in, San, in Walnut Creek, California. We lived in Walnut Creek and, and the school was close enough. We walked to it, all my brothers and sisters and everything. We all went through the same schools. So that's another issue I'll describe later. But the, um, on my, way usually back from school i had a kid across the street from me he would always menace me with his bicycle you know i was like i don't know i don't know why kids treat other kids this way if they're kind of like i was and and um and one day he he uh he got too carried away with it and actually ran me over with his bicycle and and uh, i can remember being knocked out and waking up in his in his house his mother's over me and, and he's quite concerned of course and and uh and there was nothing bad happened, but I did get knocked out, not cold. I mean, I, I don't remember anything between him running me over and waking up on their couch. And, and so he treated me that way. You know, this neighborhood kids, that's what happens. But, but uh, um, in school, in the remedial class, you know, we were, we were even afraid to go to the class in a certain way. So we kind of ran up to the door and kind of got in as fast as we could because the other kids, treated you, you know, like you're the retards and, and you're, and you can't communicate. And, and it took me four, it was either four, for the fourth or fifth grade. I, I didn't, I no longer went to that class. I went to the regular classes and, and, um, I don't remember a lot of what happened back way then. That's a long time ago, of course, but, but, uh, I, uh, remember that I was a little bit of an unruly student in the elementary after that, and I spent a lot of time in the principal's office. Um, me and the principal were quite, we knew each other quite well back then. And, and in fact, he even, uh, I never got spanked by him, but, but he brandished the, the spanking stick a few times. You know, I was, I wasn't, uh, I was a little bit of an unruly kid, but I think that was just because of my situation. And, and then uh, in California, the, the grades were from one to six were elementary and then seven to eight grade were, were um, middle school and then from uh, ninth to twelfth grade is high school. That's the way they do it in California. And uh, so in the middle school, I went to school and uh, I don't remember anything real dramatic with that except that one in one class where my... Uh, and remember, all my, my older brother and sister went through the classes through ahead of me. So, so this is important. You got to remember this. And, and, uh, and in this one, and I don't even remember the subject of this class. It probably blocked it out of my memory. But, but uh, there came a, a, an issue where we had to all give oral reports in front of the class. And so I... I uh, this was this was like traumatic for me. It's like, how am I going to do this? It's no, there's no way, you know, I can't do it, you know, that type of thing. And and, uh, and so it, it was like a week later, we're going to have to give this oral report, so get prepared for it, type of thing. And and uh, and through that whole time, I'm like, 
dwelling on this. How, how can I get out of doing this report? Can I get sick? Can I do what? I don't know. You know, I'm, I got to get out of this report because there's no way I can even possibly imagine. And, and it was just so hard for me to do that kind of a thing. And, and uh, of course, the day came and I was there in the class and the teacher called my name eventually. And I had to get up in front of the class to give this report. And I don't even remember if I was prepared or if I had a subject idea and everything. Maybe I did. I don't remember that. But, but when I got up in front of the class, I could, my mind went blank and I couldn't remember anything. And I just kind of froze. And, and there was, I couldn't even utter a word out of my mouth. That was how bad it was for me. And I was standing there. And uh, finally, after uh, I don't know how many moments of this, the teacher kind of says, well, well, when your brother and sister went through this class, this wasn't a problem. And, and, she, and these are the words she said to me. And she said, I guess intelligence doesn't run in the family like that. That's what she said. This is burned into my brain from now on. It's like, I can't believe that a teacher would say that, but that, that's what she said to me. And, uh, and then she said, she let me go sit back and sit down. And, uh, I said, wow, you know, so these are the kind of things. And, and although it seems, I seem kind of normal now. Um, well, let me get to that in a second. Uh, so I went to high school after that. I s managed to make it through uh, middle school. I went to high school and, and uh, in high school, I didn't really uh, have major problems that I remember. I except that I, I wasn't that good of a student. I, I probably, you know, like a C average or something most of the time. I, I excelled in certain classes, like uh, back then they had shop class and, and I liked shop class and I, and I did, of course, well in shop class. Um, art classes, I always got A's in art. And um, I took a photography elective and, and of course I did well in that. and, and uh, Gym, I did reasonably well in gym, although I'd never participated in any classic sports in any school that I went to, you know, like a, a football, soccer, whatever. I, I, I never participated in any of that because that would have been, again, difficult for me to do and, and uh, interact with the other members and the coach and everything. So I, ne I never did that. And other than that, except when... Um, when I was in California, when you were 16, if I remember right, maybe 15 and a half, 16, you could get a, a license to drive a motorcycle, but you could only get a learner's permit for a car, but you could get a license for, you, obviously, how are you going to drive with people on your motorcycle, you know, I guess is the reasoning. So um, some friends of mine, a couple of friends that I knew, and, and I had motorcycles, and, we'd, and, and I interacted with them mostly, and we rode as far as we could ride basically in a day and be back in the area in California that we live. And we, we rode enough that we put probably a thousand miles a week on the weekends on our, on our motorcycles. And, and back then I can even remember buying gas for 12 cents a gallon. Yeah, and you, so for, for a dollar, dollars worth of gas, you could ride all day, you know, on that motorcycle. And, and, uh, and that's what I did until I graduated high school. And uh, that's all the schooling I went, went through because there was no point for me to go to college. My father had, had an understanding, I think, of these things that I would pursue my ideas and my career, if you will. And he didn't force the idea on me to go to college and I had to do that. I think this is, myself wrong for parents to do that they they uh they should encourage it if they see that their kids have an interest but they should also encourage interest other than that if they have that to, to go into um things like i did a machine work or, or a welding or or, or um, construction or, or whatever I, I think that these are good professions and maybe even sometimes better than college graduates get so i didn't go to college or anything like any formal training. I just started working in the garage and I got a job at, at a company called Gulf, Gulf Coast Sailboats. And we, we, they made uh, boats, of course, the name, and they, and, but I did what you might call pattern making work where I, I made the, 
patterns that we made the molds on for the fiberglass boats. And I also built uh, two, two or three boats. I can't remember exactly for the owners of the company because they did racing on the weekends and, and offshore racing, which I participated with them in quite often as a crew member on their boats. So uh, I did that. And in and that time, I was around, I graduated high school around 18 years old. And then we moved to Texas because my dad was transferred to Texas. And so here I worked in Texas and I designed a boat myself, a 32 foot sailboat. And um, with my dad's help on buying the necessary materials, we built that boat. I built that boat. He helped me with some of the things and, and uh, sailed that boat in Galveston Bay area and, uh, and around the uh, Texas coast. And I also participated at that, that time in racing events with the, the owners of Gulf Coast sailboats, which they did offshore racing, sailboat racing. And uh, I did that. And, and um, this is what I did for a number of years. And at the time, I had learned to be a little bit more communicative and my communication skills had improved. Uh, this is what I want people to understand about people, because uh, I saw in the comments on this video about parents that had autistic kids and they were, they were concerned and, and um, about how their kids are going to do in life. And, um, I was, I was thinking about the, all those things when I was their kid's age in school and everything. I, I was thinking, what, what, how am I going to ever be able to uh, make it? You know, th this is the story I want to tell, and, and how I'm going to. This was a, this was on my mind a lot, and I think people like me, they think about this stuff, even though they don't communicate it. And the parents of these kids when they're teenagers, because they, everybody that's autistic, autism is a is a um, genetic trait that you inherit from somebody in your family. It's not something that you catch or that you learn or, or you know, that you're, well, uh, maybe part of it could be if you were born with some kind of a um, brain damage or something. Maybe, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I'm not that knowledgeable on it, but I know for the most part it's inherited from someone in your family. So um, there's nothing you can do about it to um, change it. So you have to accept that, but you don't have to accept that you can't um, progress any further than a certain point. This is a mistake. And I think there was this, uh, what's this guy on, on YouTube that is a kind of a famous YouTuber guy. And he, um, and he did a video called My Autistic Son. Let's see, what is he? It's uh, this guy named Mark Roper, or Rober, excuse me, Rober. And, and, and his video is that video, if you can see that on, and he talks about, and, and I know he did, and, and see this video has 19 million views, according to what I'm seeing right here, did it three months ago. Um, and I know he did this for a fundraising project, so it's quite professionally done looking video. And he's talking about his son, and in that video of his son, he speaks about, he makes a couple of comments, which I don't agree with in that, he, uh, he says, I know my son will never be an Albert Einstein or I, I don't know what the other ones. He said something like president or, or do this. He makes a few comments like that, but he still loves his son. And that's, and that, and that's good. But in that guy in that video there, I was no different than that kid in that video when I was that age. See, or, you know, he, he's interested in different things than I was. You know, he likes to draw on his, his pictures and stuff. And I did some of that, but, but, and I was more interested in um, building and, and mechanical things and working with my hands, building things. But I was really no different than him when I was that age. And, and I think it's a mistake for him to say, or even to promote that idea with this kid. In fact, my parents, may have known that I had these issues, but never told me. And I think that was, if that were the case, I don't know they're passed away now. And, and if today I would, I would like to have asked my dad, did you know that I 
was like that and maybe you just didn't tell me and and uh and i would tell him today that that was the smartest thing you could have done to not tell me that i was had any kind of problems that even though i was struggling with them because that creates a fallback situation where you can fall back to it and say uh well i guess i just didn't accomplish that because of my problem you you don't want to think in those terms i don't think at least not for me i wouldn't and uh, if if that were the case and my parents knew and my dad didn't never he never told me or, or or never let other people impress upon me this situation i i would like to thank him for that because that was the smartest thing he could have ever done to 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 in in instead he told me you can always do what you try to do and he helped me whenever he could financially do it like building the boat building boats i built when i was 12 years old i i built three el toro dinghies if you live in california you might know what that is it's a little sailing dinghy 8 foot long i built two for some, uh, for other people and one for us and before that my dad also built one so we had the jig that he made to build them on and i built three more of them on that same jig and and uh he he always helped me with these things to 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 uh, pursue my interests and what i wanted to do and although my other siblings my brother went to college he's got a degree in electrical engineering and physics and my sister's a medical doctor with uh, her her specialties were um um neurology and pathology and my younger sister um went to school but she really hasn't done too much of anything but she's she's uh, um she has her own issues i i don't want to really go into that in this video but the thing is is that that i think that if you have children that are this way don't assume that they won't amount to anything more than a certain level of existence you don't know and you shouldn't promote that idea is is what i wanted to make sure in this video that people understood that that i was there and i knew it see there was a guy one of the commenters like i said earlier that said oh that's not really autism you don't have that you know you and he even gave me a link so i could research into it well i have actually done a lot of research into this and and i know what what people are like and i can and uh, and i'm telling you that i was there and i know and that don't assume things just because somebody has this and i'm i'm going to use the words now disability or or things like that because they don't necessarily and they can accomplish whatever they want if they put their mind to it and they have the mind to put to it most of them, all of us like this um I, I was going to explain what i kind of what what i did to make me more get out of this i don't know how to put this exactly except that you have to you 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 have your i i do little things like like what they call stims and stuff but they're very minimal and they don't show up too much like i have this thing of of um doing this with my hands in fact i I even if you can see it worn a notch in my fingernail here I'm doing it cuz i do that or or i um i have an object in my hands i play with it because concentrating on on a uh, something can block out other things that you you're not handling at the moment i guess you might say so they call in the autistic world they call these stims or or you stimulate yourself it's 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 to the extreme is the kid they put the helmet on because he hits his head against the wall so much that and he's trying to distract himself from all the other sensory inputs and this constant hitting his head or something like that or people do various movements or twitches or whatever and and uh it distracts them from their other sensory inputs that they're not handling at the moment or stressful inputs i guess you might call it like um dwelling on something that you know is coming up is is a thing or or something like that and so 
in the in the autistic world they call these stims and they, and there's the I have the other terms like to mask which you try to um, hide your you like your stims in, in one particular or or that you're um, not understanding or not hearing I, I do this quite a bit I find myself not hearing the correct things people say and I just sort of agree or, or you know act like I know understand when I didn't or I asked them to repeat that, like I said in the earlier video, because I didn't understand it and I have to, and there are occasions where you have to be clear, like talking to maybe a doctor or somebody and you want to be clear on what they said or working in the shop when somebody's talking about something. You want to be clear. So there's another thing I find myself doing that, that um, I have to catch myself and pull it back, if you will, or something like that. I talk. When I start talking to somebody on a subject, I, I over detail that the, the, what I'm talking about, or I talk in too much detail or go on and on, you know, like, um, they'll, we'll be talking about, I, I don't know an example right off the hand in my head, but I can say this, I talk and then I, I start giving a history of what, why it's that way and, and why this happened and why that, and then, and, I, and pretty soon I'm talking straight for 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, I can see the person either isn't really paying attention to me or they're, they're kind of trying to figure out a way they can walk away or end the conversation. And the people that know me are generally pretty polite about this and they don't stop me. But I can see that they're really not paying attention at some point. And, I'm, and then at that point, I got to say to myself, oh, I've overdone it again. And I've got to... Uh, see how I can exit gracefully to where they're happy and I'm happy out of the conversation. It's kind of a strange, weird thing. I do this a lot. I can see myself doing it and I, I, I kind of get off on tangents and things like that. And, uh, but the people around me in the shop here, I guess have enough respect for me that they, they don't stop me. They just will sit there and listen until I'm finished. So these are the kind of things that, that we do. And, uh, let me get back to the, the, the subject though I was, I was uh, trying to get to is that how did I, how did I um, improve my situation and how did it make this better for myself, if you will? Because I didn't change the way I am. I got to emphasize this. You can't, no matter what you do, change the way you are, but you can change the way you interact with society as a whole. This is something that can be done and, and I have done it to a certain degree, not perfect, you know, like I said, I got to go to the doctor tomorrow and, and, and I'm nervous about that. But as a person with this, um, I'll call it a handicap. I don't agree with that word, but they, what you have to do is you, you're in your, you're in your comfort zone. If you can put yourself in there and you want to stay in that comfort zone, you don't want to deviate out of it. There's for some people, it's like, I don't want to leave the house or, or I don't want to um, hear loud noises or see bright lights or go out in the sun or uh, um, whatever it is. And, and you're in your little comfort zone and you're comfortable and, and you're, you're um, saying, you know, it's difficult for me to get out of that. And these, this is the thing you have to start thinking about. If you want to change, if you feel fine that way and you want to live the rest of your life that way, okay, fine. But if you want to improve your situation, not that you're improving yourself, but you're improving, I hope that air, air nozzle isn't too loud. If, you're, if you want to improve your interaction in society, and, and believe me, I think that all autistic people that have problems want to do this. I think if they say they don't, they're, they're lying to you. They want to do this. They want, in their minds, they're, they're dwelling on things. They're, they're practicing conversations they're, they're going to have so that they know when it, when this time comes, they'll say the right things and, and do the right things. It may maybe not appear to be, you know, like a total dunce or something, but, th and this is what I did and found that this worked for me. Now it may not work for everybody, but it worked for me. I, I went out of that boundary, out of my comfort zone a little at a time. I, if, if I was uncomfortable to go down to the store and, and, uh, go to the cash register to buy something, I forced myself to go do it, you know, just, and, and it was a little thing. And, and, uh, 
and sometimes it wasn't successful, but most of the time it was because I'm worried about stuff that you really don't need to worry about, but you can't help it because you don't understand that nobody's really thinking those things. You, you, you have this, it's kind of like almost being paranoid. You have these ideas in your mind that people are noticing these things. They're, they're watching you, they're, they're thinking when they're not really, they don't really even care. And you got to learn that's the case. And so you have to push yourself out of your boundary a little at a time, have some successes, build a little confidence. Um, if uh, whatever your issue is, whatever your problem, like if it's if your problem is leaving the house, go walk around the block a little bit, go a little further, go a little further next time and, and, and continually push your boundary to where you're still comfortable, reasonably comfortable, but you're pushing it out a little further and a little further and a little further. And uh, one of my my things I did, believe it or not, and I grew up kind of in the disco era and uh, and I took dance lessons. If you can imagine that, I mean, I can't even imagine autistic person taking dance lessons, but I forced myself. I went down and took dancing lessons. And in, in this interaction with the dancing studio and the lessons, I met my current wife in that because um, she was actually a dance instructor, but she was not my dance instructor. But then I, I, I met her. We arranged meetings at certain uh, a nightclub play our discotheques and, not really, uh, and, and, uh, and I learned to dance because I wasn't going to go to a disco, which was very difficult for me to begin with. I thought, if I'm going to push myself to do that, I'm going to have to know how to dance because I'm not going to dance with somebody or ask somebody to dance and if I don't know how to. So I, I took dancing lessons and I learned how to dance. Although I, I'm not that great at it now, but back then I could do some dancing pretty good. And, and I forced myself, this was an extremely difficult thing for me to do, but I forced it. And I got out of that boundary. And, 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 the, and when I, I you know, um, achieved that goal that I wanted there, and I met my wife in the process, and I don't know, for some reason, my wife understood or liked the way I was, you know, I'm kind of like a nerd and she likes me and, and, and we start going out and, and uh, eventually we got married, but she also acknowledges that in the beginning, her, her family is very social, you know, her brothers and sisters and her mother and, and father was alive then and, and, uh, and they didn't understand me at all in the beginning because it's kind of like he doesn't say anything you know you know and, and so they there was there was this other barrier and being around her family who are very sociable people they almost force you they, they don't they don't and, and and uh and many autistic people would back totally away from this and they would say you know i got to get away from this situation but myself i kind of pushed myself into these boundaries and and i said you know if i'm gonna get anywhere and, and do anything i've got to learn these things i've got to do it and and i understand people that this is very difficult and then they think they can't do it in the comments on the video on the phone i was reading and there was various comments that said you know i can never get in front of a camera and make a youtube video like you're doing and i appreciate that and i understand i couldn't have done that in the beginning either but maybe just maybe you can push yourself a little bit into that boundary. You could say, oh, if I got a video camera, I'll take a video and I won't necessarily post it, but you know, I'll take one and look at it and maybe make another one and look at it and watch myself and see if I can, uh, I don't have to show it to anybody but myself and, and try it and see, you know, a, a video is not the only thing. I mean, it, your issue could be many things, but I'm just saying you have to push your boundary at all times even right now today i'm pushing my boundaries making that video yesterday was pushing my boundary way beyond and and this video right now is pushing it explaining these things i've never these things i've said in these last two videos i have never talked to anybody about i don't have any counseling or any i'm, I'm not saying counseling's wrong or bad it's not for me i, I don't i don't want to you know talk to somebody about this stuff 
I don't feel the need for that. But but um, maybe that could help some people. But but I I do things that continually push my boundaries. Even my machine work, I push my boundary. I'm I'm a. I get jobs and I'm like, can I do that job? I'm a little bit apprehensive of it. I, I dwell on it some. I, I, I have a little difficulty starting it because I got to make sure I start it right or, or I don't want to make a mistake because it's all the, most all the time I'm working on very expensive material. And sometimes people have done work to it before my work. And if I screw it up, I'm going to have to pay for them and the material. So I, I got to make sure I don't make mistakes. And I'm pushing that boundary, even in, in your career, if you're a machinist, even if you're not autistic or anything, you push that boundary. You've got to push it continually a little bit. Um, try to remain a little towards your comfort zone, but you push it enough. You have a success. You say, wow, you know, I did that. And, and I remember and, and I accomplished this thing. And, and this autism thing, well, for me, I don't, I'm not saying this might work for everybody because it might, they might not be capable of doing it. But you got to push that boundary and make it ha happen for yourself if you can. Um, I watched a video on this on a YouTube the other day of this guy that was the same way. He didn't finish high school. He became a photographer and he and he and he did photography work and um, he pushed his boundaries. See, this is what you have to do, and you don't know what you'll accomplish till you do that. Um, if if I knew myself what I was going to do back when I was like 10 years old where I, and you know, eight, 10 years old or wherever, when I couldn't talk to people and I, uh, and I was thinking, how am I ever going to make it in the world? I couldn't even imagine where I am today. And this is what I want to put forward in this video. If I can, that if you have kids or you're a young person, and you're struggling with these difficulties, or even if you're an older person, the, the guy that said he could never do a YouTube video was, I think in his comedy, he said he was 56 years old or something, 57, and, and, uh, and he's gone through his whole life like I did, struggling with these things. And if you're gonna be happy with that, fine, you know, live the rest of your life that way. But if that's not what you want, you have to, change something because nothing's going to change until you change it and parents of kids don't imagine your your child won't get anywhere because oftentimes these you know people with autism are very intelligent and they hear you they understand you even if they don't respond at the time later they might be able to to improve their situation they they will if they have the desire to like i did and they'll and they'll uh, do things that you couldn't imagine. I surpass my my brother is a is a um, electrical engineer of physics. He owns part of a company, and my sister's a medical doctor. And I don't know what my brother's company's worth, but I think that financially I may have surpassed all of them who went to college, except my younger sister. Um, in in financial. Ish, wealth or issues if that's a measure of success and who would have ever thought that the kid in the family that was at in school was considered you know by the other kids you know a, a nerd a, a um you know the, the names they called me and 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 what, how they treated me would have been able to make it to this point you can't judge that when they're that age is what i'm saying and have some optimism because you don't know. And this is the one I want to impress with you on this video. I, I know I've gone a long time and uh, I don't expect most people to probably watch this to the end, but I wanted to do this little follow-up video on this because I felt like I needed to give this little extra information of my history to make people understand that, you know, I, I was I was no different than than this this kid in in a Mark Rober's video at one time. 